The Mississippi River is important to me because it is the main artery on what we indigenous people call Nimama Ki, or our Mother Earth. The river begins here in Minnesota and winds its way down and is the main artery on Turtle Island. I love the river because it sustains us in so many ways, from drinking water to our emotional and mental well-being. It never fails to take my breath away. I love the river because it is, I think, the greatest resource we have here in the Twin Cities. And it provides us recreation, it provides us drinking water, it provides us visual wonders. The Mississippi River, in our 72 miles, concentrates stories and histories like few places on the entire Mississippi River. We have St. Anthony Falls, the only major waterfall on the river. We have St. Paul, the head of navigation on the Mississippi River, the bookend to New Orleans. We have archaeological sites and geologic formations here that are rare within the entire country. So you put all that together and this is truly one of the most special places on the whole river. Our stretch of the Mississippi River is such an amazing treasure. The river changes more in our 72 mile stretch than it does anywhere else along its length which is why Congress designated it a national park. But when the fate of our new riverfront park was being debated and discussed in 1993, a few people noticed that there were just businesses and government agencies in the room. That's when Friends of the Mississippi River was born. We protect and restore land, protect our riverfront banks and bluffs from overdevelopment, and protect the water of our river, our drinking water, all with the people who were missing in that room, everyday Twin Cityans. Together, we've permanently protected over 2,000 acres, including seven new public parks and reserves, including Pine Bend Bluff Scientific and Natural Area, which is beloved for its vital bird habitat and amazing river valley views. We wanted to protect our land, but we didn't know how to go about at it. So we rest easily at night knowing we made the right decision that it will be preserved. Today, Pine Bend is one of dozens of Friends of the Mississippi River sites being restored by FMR staff and ecologists who work with thousands of youth, families, and individual volunteers who are willing to get their hands dirty for our local waters and wildlife. Everything that's on the street in here or on the roof gets into these storm drains and goes directly out to the river. So that's called pollution. It's called non-point source pollution. FMR introduced us to the River Gorge, the regional River Gorge. And for me, that's one of my favorite spots to return to. One, because it's very unique. You see many different kinds of small little ecospheres in that tiny area. But also because we did native planting there a couple years in a row and buckthorn removal. And it's nice to return and see the fruits of your labors. FMR not only protects important places along the Mississippi River, but restores them. Here at the confluence of the Elk and Mississippi Rivers, this amazing 180-acre prairie was soybean fields just a year ago. Now it's full of wildflowers and grasses that support life, build healthy soil, and help keep our waters clean. When I first started showing up at events for volunteering with Friends of the Mississippi River, I was thinking I would just be doing little things, planting here and pulling weeds there. I got to know the people of FMR, and I understood right away just how involved they were in the local issues, getting advocates out there to talk to our legislators and make a difference. I used to be a state legislator and know how absolutely essential FMR's advocacy work was in improving the public policy decisions that impact the Mississippi River. The critical area legislation was so important to pass into law because there are threats to the river 
and this helped mitigate some of those threats. At FMR, we believe the river belongs to us all, that our river is essential to our community's vitality, and that our riverfront should be accessible to everyone. We work with local residents and community leaders to advocate for riverfront development that expands opportunities for all to thrive and supports livable communities. When development projects come up along the river or uh, at the state level when water quality policy is proposed, FMR River Guardians speak up to make sure that it's the best it can be for the Mississippi River. In general, Minnesotans love our water and really value our water and protecting it and leaving it better than we found it for future generations. And I think that FMR gets to provide a way for people to speak up for our river. When FMR organized and started to put together their uh, ideas and their principles as an organization, all of a sudden people started showing up. People with voices for the river. And that made my job a lot easier. And I think it motivated local governments to take a second look at what they were deciding to do. I thought it was tremendously impactful. While the river is cleaner and healthier in many ways than it was in decades past, it suffers today from a different kind of pollution, one that's more difficult to see. Sediment and excess nutrients that make their way from city streets and farm fields into the Mississippi, untreated and unfiltered, eventually contributing to the dead zone in the Gulf of Mexico. Row crop agriculture really dominates the landscape in the upper Mississippi. And one of the things that we really love about FMR is the way it is working with farmers and with other communities to protect the health of the river. One way to do that is actually giving farmers different alternatives to diversify their landscape, particularly perennials and cover crops to provide economic benefit, to diversify the landscape and provide better soil health. And that in turn will improve water quality. There are many advocacy groups in the state and in the country working for water quality and working for environmental protection and advocacy for various things to do with the environment. But one of the things that sets FMR apart, in my opinion, having worked both at the national level and at the local level, is that you're never shrill. You're never out of line with the science. You're never pushing for something that is not really the right thing to push for just because it's going to raise money for your group. Friends of the Mississippi River. At FMR, we believe that everyone should have equal access to riverfront parks and a healthy river. But unfortunately, not everyone does. Whether it's migrant or immigrant communities or communities that labored on behalf of this great city they've always had some sort of connection to the river. And I think over time that there's been a disconnection that's happened and I really see our work as bringing that back and making sure that everyone benefits from this great natural resource that sits in our backyard and that all can thrive from it. Pillsbury has become friends with what I think what we would have seen a few years ago is unlike partners, uh, friends of the Mississippi and the Minneapolis Park Foundation, and have found a place of kind of commonality. And that is that we're all trying to enrich the lives of communities that have been left out of conversations. I think people as individuals always feel like their own immediate action isn't gonna do anything, and that to have a standing organization that you can go to, that you um, trust is important, um, that you know there's a bigger force working behind it, and it, it connects people then, right? You are connected to people who feel the same way. You become more than either just an individual or an organization, you become a driving force. When we care for the water, we are caring for ourselves. If we could love and respect and have gratitude for the water, we would learn to have gratitude and love and respect for each other.